Okay, let's finish up chapter four. Key issue four. We're looking at why do folk and pop culture face sustainability challenges? Sustainability challenges in folk culture. If you have increased connection with pop culture and you're trying to maintain the wonderful and unique traditions of your folk culture, that's going to be a problem because pop culture is created for the masses and it just kind of takes over people's culture. Let's look at two specific things here. Um, the Amish. The Amish. You have this Amish guy right here. And what they do is they kind of isolate themselves. And they are a traditional group. Uh, they avoid mechanical and electric power. They travel by horse and they use hand tools. This is part of their folk culture. We look at their background. How they remained folk culture is they migrated from Europe to North America in search of low-cost land. And Kind of the areas they found this at the time was Pennsylvania, Ohio, and Iowa. Their way of life diffuses very slowly through inter-regional migration within the United States after they moved over here. This is not created for the masses. Like a whole bunch of people are not wanting to live this folk culture way of life where they don't have electricity. So it's very isolated and they keep it in small groups. Well, most recently, uh, this folk culture has kind of had to transform a little bit by transplanting from Pennsylvania to Kentucky where land is cheaper because they have a tradition where when each son grows up they provide them with land to farm the issue was the land in Pennsylvania was becoming very expensive and they couldn't afford it so they had to move more southerly and westerly and find land that was affordable so that was a challenge to sustaining their folk culture we look at women's roles well these have changed as well because when we integrate pop culture Women go from staying at home and having children and cooking to getting an education and working in the workforce. If you've got women that have been staying home and that's part of your folk tradition, pop culture is, is overtaking that. Indian marriage. Um, <laughs> we've seen the increased demand for dowries. And these dowry disputes are creating adverse impacts on women. So dowries didn't even used to be in effect in, in India. And it really, it was the British culture that came in and influenced them to create these dowries. And it's gone back and forth. You used to have to pay dowry to buy a, a bride. Um, but this, then it switched over to where it's like, well, the bride's family really needs to pay a dowry to the groom as part of his way of taking care of her. It's gone back and forth. But this folk tradition of the dowry has really um, increased the demand as the impact of pop culture increases the demand for, uh, for supplies and consumerism. Sustainability challenges for pop culture. Well, what's the problem with pop, pop culture and how is it impacting sustainability? Well, the first thing is pop culture creates uniform landscapes pretty much where everything looks the same. The distribution of pop culture around the world tends to make places look the same because of product recognition, where you have logos that are everywhere. And here we are, this is the United States, where you see all of these logos. And Hardee's isn't necessarily in Texas, where we are, but some people watching this video probably know about Hardee's. But what you're seeing more and more in the United States and across the globe is Starbucks, McDonald's, Walmart, Target, Taco Bell, all across the landscape of the United States. So if you were to stand on this street corner right here and you maybe you were, maybe you were blindfolded and somebody transported you around and then they took off your blindfold and they, you saw this, you'd be like, I don't know where I am because it all looks the same. Because you could be standing on a corner in Dallas to see this. You could be standing on a corner in Kansas City. You could be standing in a corner in... New York State, you know, where are you? There's nothing unique about the place because it all looks like Walmart, Target, KFC, uh, Starbucks. And it's starting to look like, like that across the globe, too, where everything is uniform. Everything looks the same, so that's a problem. Golf courses. This is just an example of pop culture. Well, pop culture of, of the Western pop culture likes to play golf. Um, the problem is, is it really changes the environment because you flatten hills, you cut grass really short, you bring in sand, you drain, or you create new bodies of water. You use fertilizers and pesticides to create this landscape. And if we're thinking about sustainability, then 
I mean, you look down here, and perhaps it's a problem because you have all this green area that used to be something else. It looks green, which we think is good, but at the same time, we're changing the landscape, and we're cutting out this huge section of here for open fairways and golf greens. So this is Congressional County Club in Bethesda, Bethesda Maryland, and they made significant alterations to the landscape, and it takes up all of this area right here. So if this is an aspect of pop culture, this certainly isn't used for individual families to farm on their own land, right? Uh, pop culture also challenges environmental capacity because it generates a high volume of waste in the form of solids, liquids, and gases. You think about it. When you buy a product in the United States, you go to the store, it's packaged in things. Even if it's just a pen, think how small a pen is, like the size of maybe a little bit more than your finger. Well, what it's packaged in is much bigger than that. You've got this plastic clear packaging so you can see the pen and then the big cardboard type uh, thin but cardboard type wrapping and, and plastic packaging that goes all the way around it and then what do you do with when you buy the pen you throw all that away that's waste when you go to McDonald's even they give this big paper bag lots of napkins maybe knife and fork and boxes for your food and it's all for just like some french fries you know and then all that is waste that's pop culture so We've got most of this pop culture uh, environmental uh, waste that's visible in solid in the creation of cans, bottles, cars, paper, and plastic. And that all has to go somewhere. Some of it's recycled these days, but a lot of it goes into landfills. The more people adopt pop culture across the globe, the more waste we have. So as far as sustainability and our ability to be able to live on this planet, pop culture tends to be a big problem. One of the concerns is resource depletion. In pop culture, there's a large demand for animal products. In one form, it's because of things that they're buying for their clothing. Because it, it endangers, over the course of history, specific animals like mink, lynx, jaguar, kangaroo, and whale. They've all been used over time to create clothing. These days, we have a lot more that we can create through synthetic fibers. But people still want popular items that are made from these animals and if you're getting a bunch of money for whale then you're going to have people across the globe that are starving they're going to find a way to go out and get whale and kill it and sell it so they can make a profit that's pop culture pop culture also uses a large supply of meat you think about beef is the western diet any fast food chain what are we eating beef in in the form of a hamburger taco even Chipotle, it's beef that we're eating for the most part. Pop culture uses a lot of beef. The problem is um, it takes a lot of land to feed beef. And here's what I mean. So we have to have land to grow food for humans. But we also have to have land to, grow, to have our animals live on. But then we also have to have land to grow crops to feed to the animals. So really it's three times as much when we have the Western diet. They to grow meat, not only do we have the land that we have to grow our own food on, we also have to have land to have the animals on and land to grow food to feed the animals. So it's a big resource depletion. One of the things that we're doing to combat that is recycling. This reduces the amount of solid waste going into landfills and incinerators through two steps. If you don't know what an incinerator is, look it up on Google. Now I'll just tell you, it's a place that burns trash. So it makes it a smaller volume. So recycling is done in two manners. First, you pick it up from the consumers. But again, that takes the consumer taking the time to put it into their recycling bin and put it out on the curb. Number two, the step is they manufacture those used products back into other products like paper, plastic, glass, and aluminum. So over time, we have reduced the amount of solid waste going into landfills. The major portion that we've reduced is paper. Think of all the paper products that we just throw away. That's how huge it used to be. Now, after recycling, our solid waste is reduced from 250 million to 164 million. So that's, that is getting much better. Recycling is certainly helping. Um, and we look at the waste per capita here. Let me see if I can remember what I was looking at when we put this graph in. Okay. So, yes, this is good. So here's our waste that has been going up with our, as our population increases over the years from 1960 to 2010. But the good thing is, recycling has really caught up with that. 
So we're not putting too much more into landfills because thankfully we are recycling a lot more. That's our look at chapter four and key issue four.